because as, as you go down Matthew 24 things is all this is already happening We're going to start at verse number four. Then we're going to make our way down to verse number 10 to talk about one particular. I believe where we're at right now in the church. Matthew chapter 24, verse number four. It's good to see everybody here. I know we're missing some tonight. Um, some I haven't heard from. Hopefully I hear from. And uh, But nonetheless, we're here as a good good presence of God in this place Matthew 24 verse number 4 and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you is it possible to be deceived it's possible the Bible says that, that the very elect can be for many shall come into my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many that's already been happening right we can check that one off the list and you shall hear of wars rumors of wars and see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet we can kind of check that one off that's already been happening in the right for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places and we can kind of put a check on that one right there. That's been happening. And it said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So for all you that going, oh, Lord, you got to come back now. I can't make it. I can't take it. I'm going to break. I'm going to this. The Bible says this is just the very beginning. So if you think it's bad right now, Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And we can kind of put a check on that one right now because that is happening maybe not particularly here in the United States of, of America but it's happening outside of, outside of our cushion. All around the United States of America there is missionaries and men and women giving their lives for the name of Jesus right now as I preach this message tonight. For some of you that are like, oh, I just can't come to church tonight because of kids, and I can't come to church tonight because I'm sick, and I can't this, and I can't that. There is somebody giving their life for the name of Jesus Christ right now saying, you know what, I did it. I gave my life for the name of Jesus. I want you to remember that next time you think it's too hard, at that very moment, I want you to remember someone's given their life for the name of Jesus at that very moment. Somewhere in a jungle, somewhere in a, in, in, in a tribe where, where the name of Jesus cannot be spoken, where Bibles cannot be entered into the country. Somebody is literally giving their life for you to say, oh, it's just too hard for me to. I believe it's time to get our priorities straight in these last days. Amen. I believe it's time to get our priorities straight in these last days to make our mind up to live for God. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall put you on a pedestal, call you their hero. No, shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. 24 verse number 10 and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall arise shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that endure shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved tonight I want to talk about a little word that I believe 
is, has entered into the mindset of Christianity today. And maybe the United States is not under persecution right now for Jesus' name Christians, but it is certainly on the way there. While I was, while I was gone, a little church in Texas, while we sat here on our little comfortable pews, all the way down to an 18-month-old baby was the victim of a shooting in a church in Texas. Oh, I can't bring my kids to church. I can guarantee you the following Sunday after this thing is probably going to be one of the largest attended services that church has ever had. I believe, amen, that it's time for the church to lose the offended spirit. If there's one way Satan can destroy the church, we have to lose the offended spirit. Because when tragedy comes against the church, it unites the church. We come together. We fight for one cause. We know who the enemy is. But when Satan has purposely put it in our heart that our brother or our sister is the enemy, and the Bible says offenses are going to come, and if the devil can get the offended spirit to creep into the church where we become offended at one another. He can separate and destroy a, a church with ever, uh, without a bullet ever being fired in the sanctuary. Tonight I want to talk, uh, talk about the offended spirit. Tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time together. I know God that you're in this place. And Lord Jesus, I know, God, that you don't want your church to be offended, but you want, Lord God, for your church to be united, one mind and one accord. I pray, God, that we, Lord Jesus, as this world is becoming divided and this world is, is pulling itself apart, I believe it's time for the church to come together, put our differences aside, Lord Jesus, and recognize who our enemy is, Lord Jesus, and experience the greatest revival, Lord, Lord Jesus, that you have intended and you, that you have promised for the church. I pray, Lord God, all of this, Lord, have your will and your way in this sanctuary tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray in Jesus. Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Shake someone's hand as you're seated today. Amen, amen, amen. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. It's already 830. But we live in a society right now that is... That is offended. Sadly to say, I don't think racism will ever be will ever be erased from the world. It just it just won't happen. But it can be erased from the church. Amen. It can be erased. It, Things that are present in the world does not necessarily mean they have to be present in the church. And we have to understand that the world is going to be offended by everything that goes on. And, and I, was, I was coming off the boat today and this lady, she had her speaker out and she was singing church songs, Brother Sato. And she had it pumped up. I guess somebody asked her to stop singing because by the time I got out of the restroom, they had, they, they had already shut her down. Uh, but I made a purpose to walk over her. I know that there were probably some things that we don't agree with doctrinally, but I made a point to walk over and to shake her hand and thank her and man for 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 singing about Jesus and 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 worshiping Jesus in public and man I I I don't believe it's time for us to uh, uh 
for the church to be offended at one another to the point to where this gospel is, is not being pushed out. But it's time for the church to come together and be united in one spirit, in one mind, in one accord. And, 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 and not be offended at one another and not be offended at the pastor and not be offended at the assistant pastor, the youth pastor. Hey Amen. And going on down, the offended at the Sunday school teacher. But we have to understand it's time to be able to put our differences aside. Because we got a city that needs to know about this gospel. If you, if you look at the bottom, if you look on the, the, the final verse, or not the final verse, but verse number 14, the one after it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse number 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come it is not the church's responsibility to be offended at one another but it is the church's responsibility to preach this gospel to this city that we're in right now the city of Barso, the surrounding communities Linwood, Newberry, Yermo Daggett and we, and we could go all around Grandview uh, but we have to understand it is not it, it, offended at one another should not consume the time or the mission of the church I'm preaching to somebody today that may feel amen that you become offended at the church and you realize well maybe if the church was a little different my family might be a little different man I feel the preaching spirit on me right now amen we, we have too many times we come to church and we feel it's the church's fault that our family is the way that it is but Jesus is trying to reach out and says hey I want to change your family I want to change your situation you have to you have to allow Jesus you have to you, if you go to the doctor you get the medicine it can sit in the cabinet all day long but until you take the pill it won't have the desired effect upon your body you can stare at the container you can look at the container you can even hold the pill in your hand but until you ingest it into your body you will not have the desired effect I mean that the doctor wanted or desired to have it in your body this gospel will not affect your family unless you allow it to become to the inner part of your family you can hold the Bible in your hand hey amen you can hold it close to your heart but unless you hide it in your heart thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee oh I'm preaching to somebody today who's been holding this gospel but not letting the gospel be a part of them You can become offended where you pull the very thing or push the very thing away from you that was meant to help you. I was, was sitting. The Lord began to move upon me. We live in a, in a society right now or in, in the church where we get offended if we feel the entire message was centered around Y-O-U, right? How dare that preacher? He went in that prayer room with just me on his mind and pulled every scripture he could think of. just to get me mad tonight granted some people do pastor that way I don't pastor that way but we live in that society brother Eugene where they get offended they say well preacher how dare you talk formulate that whole message around my family around my needs around my this my that You've got to understand something. You better hope God formulates a message around the very things that send in you to hell. 
You better hope God loves you so much that he puts something in place that causes you to wake up and say, you know what? I'm headed down the wrong path. I need to straighten up and not be offended and get on the path that God, come on somebody. Amen. Get on the path that God wants you to be on. I'm preaching to somebody tonight, amen, who's, who's at times become offended at the word. And you say, preacher, how can you stand up in your, in your shoes and be able to look me in the eye and tell me you love me? Amen. And then preach that way to my family. Preach that way to my Amen. To me personally, you preacher, you don't know what I've been through. I'm here to tell you the word of God is the answer to every situation that you've been through. And you cannot afford to become offended at the very thing that's going to save your family. You cannot afford to become offended at the man or woman that's been praying for your soul, praying for your family, praying, amen, that God will amen, take your family into heaven. I'm here to remind somebody it's not time to be offended, but it's time to jump into the place where say God I need you to mold me tonight I'm not very strong in my body tonight I'm actually very weak in my body tonight I don't know what it is but the devil's fought me from the very moment I walked into this place tonight because I believe he did not want me to preach this message tonight it's going to be real simple but here we see in Mark chapter 6, it says in verse number 1, And he went out from thence and came to his own country, and his disciples follow, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works were wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended... At him. Much like today's society where they, they ask, where did you go to college from? Where did you get your degree from? Who did you study under? It was the same mindset back in the day of Jesus. Jesus didn't sit under the great philosophers or the great teachers of the law that many of the other teachers sat under and they criticized him for it and they cut his words off out of their life because of who he was. And sadly, Christianity has taken a turn to where we we rely on who you sat under and who was your mentor and what, what college did you go to and what degree in theology and hey, what, what, what college did you get your doctorate from and this. And, and we have to understand, I, I, I'm not here to preach against all that stuff. What I'm trying to say is, hey amen, we live in such an educated society and we think we're so much farther uh, it, it advanced in the days of Jesus. But no, Sister Hicks, it's the same mindset today as it was in the days of Jesus. They relied on who you sat under and who this was and who that was and they got offended amen at the word why because it pricked the very heart of their souls amen and I, I'm thankful for men of God that can get up amen and preach a message to somebody that will prick the very heart of somebody that says hey I need to be saved Peter preached a message on this in the second chapter of, our, of, of Acts that pricked the very heart of men and women and they said what must we do to be saved there's something about the foolishness of preaching and it can get to the heart of the uneducated it can get into the heart of the educated it don't matter amen what culture amen or what what, what race you are from this gospel can be preached and it can be brought into your family and it can change your family I believe this gospel here today is the answer for every situation amen that you have gone through God is trying to wake the church up in these last days to not be offended at the word that can save your family why is it the devil will tell you stay home tonight 
You know, that preacher's found out what's going on in your life. And he's probably going to say something about it from behind the pulpit. And everybody's going to know. And it's quiet in here because we've all been told that by the enemy. But Sister Dion, I'd rather come to a place where some people might know what I've done. Because it's taken me in alignment to a place that one day when I get there, nobody's ever going to remember what I've done nobody's ever going to remember the sin that I was come on that same power that the same power that the blood of Jesus has I mean that washes the sin away brother Ibarra and that we're going to a place if we continue to come to a place where we might be judged and we might be criticized as somebody that's not prayed up the way that they should be may cast judgment on our family or cast judgment on us but I'm keeping myself in alignment and then because I'm going to a place where that same power that washed the very sin out of my life. It's going to be the same power that's going to wash the very memory of humanity that's going to heaven. They won't ever remember the sin that I've done. And if they won't ever remember the trash that God pulled me out of, they won't ever remember the miry clay that was trying to destroy all my soul. Amen. But if I keep myself in alignment, I'm going to a place where it will be forever erased. And the enemy is constantly trying to get us in our mind. If you just stay home, it'll be a lot easier. And you're aligning yourself to go to a place where everybody in hell will remember everything you've ever done. And I want to ask a question. Who do you want to keep, keep in company with for eternity? With somebody that can remember of who you were before Jesus? Or do you want to keep company with somebody that's not going to remember, amen, before the blood? And they're going to only remember what happened after the blood. They're going to remember a warrior standing up in the midst of a battle saying, I may be defeated today, but as Brother Ibarra has underlined in this Bible, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. Amen, for I shall arise. We have to understand, amen, I can't afford to get offended at the preacher. I can't afford to get offended at the word of God I can't afford to get offended amen why Satan got offended at the very presence of who Jesus was and who he stood for and became, became offended at who Jesus was and the Bible says that he was cast from heaven as lightning but Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and they were quick to point out what family he was from and that he was unlearned they were in love with their their self. Today we live in a society that is in love with their, their self. He Thus trying to wake the church up. We can't afford to get to the point where we say, Jesus, what about my feelings? And it leads you to a path that leads you away from heaven, leads you away from what God has intended you to have and experience in your life. The devil will always tell you your brother doesn't like you. I'm plowing on because I feel the attack of the enemy in my spirit right now. 
the devil will always tell you your brother doesn't like you your sister doesn't like you all they do is talk about you all they do is want you to fail they can't wait for you to quit the church they can't wait for you to just leave the church and get your family out of here come on I'm preaching to somebody tonight amen who's allowed that thought to seed into their mind where you just believe it amen why do you think there's so many backsliders sitting out in the house today and they think the church is against them well maybe some of them have legitimate reasons and the church was against them but I'm here to tell you not every church is an enemy of your soul not every preacher is an enemy of your soul and I want to tell you this the word of God will never be the enemy of your soul and the true church of God will never be the enemy of your soul and if there's ever a time to be joined with somebody or the body of Christ it's in this day it's in this hour I got too much going on to center my messages continually around one family or one church. I only preach what God gives me. I don't preach anything else. I don't write anything down and I, 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 I'm, well, I, I, I don't write anything down really that I go by it's just basically an outline when I get up here behind the pulpit and man I believe God wanted me to talk about this tonight because Satan would love for you to think the church is against you because he thought heaven was against him he thought heaven was against him and it caused God to create a place that never was in existence before Hell was never part of the picture until Satan and one third of the angels rebelled against the presence of God. Hell had not been created. Why? Because the Bible says that hell was created, amen, for the devil and his fallen angels. Amen. Hell was never meant to be a part of the picture until it, uh, the, uh, the situation presented itself for God to create a place for them to go to. God never intended you to go to that place. Offended. How many times have you sat at home and you said, that preacher don't care about me. You're used to me running tops of the pews and jumping and shouting. And believe me, I would tonight. I've had enough sugar this week to... I don't believe in diets when you go on a cruise. It's just stupid. I, I, it's a harsh word. It's a harsh word. But about 15, 15 years ago, kids could handle that word. But I believe today that it's not meant for God. God did not save you. To die offended. I want to say that God did not save you for you to die offended. And the, and, and the enemy is always wanting to tell you the preacher. that, Like I just said earlier, the preacher doesn't like you. All he does is talk about you. I'm here to tell you. I want to give you a clear picture with what goes on in my house. Say, man, I don't talk down about nobody in front of my children. When I'm discussing things about the church, my children are not present. Hey Amen. It's just between my wife and I. I want you to understand these things. Hey Amen. But I want you to do understand there are days I'm going to walk into this place. Maybe Pastor Scott's not had the best of days. Hey Amen. I, I, I deal with problems and situations too. And just because I have a cross look on my face doesn't mean I'm thinking something about your family. I, I, I'm trying to clear some air here in this place here tonight because I felt tension before I left and I didn't want to preach on it and then jump on a boat for four days and said, woo-wee, Brother Price, handle it. Amen. But I, I felt it before I left, and I'm preaching to somebody here tonight. Amen. Pastor Scott, amen, and my wife, and my wife, we love you. We pray for your family. We desire your family to go to heaven. Amen. But we're not going to pet you when you're heading off in the wrong direction. We're not going to tickle your ears when you're heading off in the wrong direction. Why? Because I don't want 
you to go to a place that was created for Satan and his angels, but I desire for every family in this place to make heaven their home. Offenses are going to come. But the problem is that sometimes we allow them to become fences in our life. And when offenses can become fences, and we put up those fences, become barriers, and we say, I'm never going to allow another man of God. I'm never going to trust another man of God. I'm never going to trust another preacher. I remember the situation that happened with my grandfather, and I'm, I'm told you I'm, I'm not going to be long. I'm, I'm almost done. A situation concerning my grandfather before he passed. And it was a situation to where if I had not been careful, I could have became offended at the United Pentecostal Church International. Very easily could have, in fact, it was something that I almost never set foot back in the UPCI. I'd be like, Brother Stone King right now, send my card in, you know, whatever they want to do, right? But I remember my grandfather sitting across from me, and he looked me straight in the eye, and he said, time is too short to become offended. And don't let nothing steal your crown. I want to ask you a question tonight. What are you allowing to steal your crown? Because you're the one that gives it away, not me. What are you allowing to become an offense in your life that's allowing you to not get to the place where God wants you to be? Because when you're offended, there's a barrier. Offense. Why do you think they call it offenses? There's a barrier that's set up and you only allow yourself to go so far and you, once that preacher offends you, you want to find another preacher. My grandfather stopped me straight in my tracks and he said, hey, you can't live this life and expect to have a ministry because you're going to leave this and go to something else and you're going to get offended in that organization. And then you're going to go to another organization. You're going to get offended in that organization and pretty soon you'll be a man without a cause. Why do you think there's so many church hoppers? Because people has learned to live with offenses. I know this is not a very popular message tonight. And you're thinking, wow, man, Pastor Scott, why are you tramping all over my backyard? Somebody's got to. Somebody loved me enough and told me and cared enough for my soul and said, hey, if you don't take care of it now, it'll, it, it, you'll be a slave to it for the rest of your life. I don't preach nothing that I personally haven't really gone through. I don't preach nothing, amen, with such strong conviction that I haven't personally gone through. Because quite frankly, amen, I had never no intention to ever set in foot back in the UPCI. But I had a man that loved my soul, that was a mentor in my life and said, Hey, buddy, if you walk down that path, you'll never come back from it. It's quiet. Why do you think marriages don't last? They get offended. And pride sets in. How dare she? How dare he? Don't they know who I am? Don't she know 
But uh, how much have I done for her? How much have I done for him? How dare? And offenses come in and then a barrier gets put up and pride sets in. And what happens after pride sets in? It will destroy your entire family. It don't matter. It don't matter what kind of degree you have. Once offenses come in your life, it'll take everything from you. It'll drain. It don't matter how much money you have in your account. It'll take everything from you. It don't matter how long you've been married. It'll take everything from you. It don't matter how good your relationship is with your wife. It'll take everything from you. You'll be left with nothing. So I want to ask you tonight. Is it really worth it to be offended? And pack up. Get your little mule team, your 20 mule team, and head off wherever you want to go and do what you want to do and be what you want to be and get caught up in a vicious cycle that's going to forever destroy your family. I preached this message. I didn't know who was going to be here tonight, but I sat on a boat. I don't know where I was because my GPS thing wasn't working on my phone. That's what I love about cruises. No cell phone data, no internet. I don't pay for the internet on the boat. Call me cheap. I like, I like the leash gone. I don't know where I was on that ocean. All I know is I looked all around and there was water all the way around me, Brother Hicks. And God began to deal with me about offenses. And began to take me back on a journey about what almost destroyed my life when I was just a young man starting out in the ministry. I would never be pastoring Apostolic Lighthouse right now, Brother Isaito, if I would allow my heart to give in to what my heart was telling me what to do. How many times have we gotten in trouble saying, well, my heart's telling me to do this. No, you need to do what God's telling you what to do. You can't afford to be led by your heart. You can't afford to be led by your personal desires or your personal mission or your personal dreams. Amen. You have to allow this, the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you into all truth. And I had a man that was shamed by an organization. And you know what? If they hear this and they don't like what I was, I, I'll tell it to the district board. I don't care. But I've forgiven them. But I had a man who was wronged by an organization tell me you can't get a, you can't afford to get caught up in this vicious cycle and be destroyed by the words of the enemy. If it can happen to preachers leaving an organization, it can happen to saints leaving a church. I'm here to tell you the devil knows what he's doing. Why is there so many separate Jesus name organizations in the United States of America right now? Because why? People are getting offended and it's causing division among the saints of God. Amen. I'm preaching a message that's not really popular tonight. Amen. But the devil knows what he's doing. And if he can get the church divided on a grand scale across this United States of America, amen, and get different organizations say, well, amen, this one treats me better. You know how much adversity I had to go against to even get in the, in, in the United Pentecostal Church International? You know how many times I had to say I was sorry for something I never did? So don't give me that look, preacher. You never been through what I've been through. I had to apologize for things I never did. But I did have to apologize for, for some things I did do. If the church in North America could ever come together, why do you think Satan's not beheading Christians in America right now? We're already at odds against one another. We're doing the devil's work without him ever. They don't even take us serious.
Ouch, right? But what would happen if we learned not to become offended? There's another church that preaches the same truth that that we do here in, in this city. And right now, me and that man can sit down and have dinner together. We could go out and play golf together right now. I could call him up on the phone right now and talk to him. I made it a point in my life to let no man steal my crown. Because I had a man that mentored me when I was younger, still young, when I was younger I said don't let nobody steal your crown offenses will come but you're the one that puts the fence up not the devil I don't know why God led me to preach this coming back from a very short vacation but God God desires for you to be in heaven one day And you can't make it to heaven with offenses in your life. It don't matter how long you talk in tongues. It don't matter how many times you ask God to forgive you. If you don't change your ways. Deny yourself. Get rid of the old dude. Take on the new man. You're going to walk out of this building tonight probably saying, Pastor Scott offended me tonight. But I want to ask you a question. Are you going to get out your, your tools and start building a fence? Or are you going to make sure the blood of Jesus washes everything away? Come on. I'm not preaching a high tempo message tonight, but I'm preaching something very simple that will save your soul. Something that tried to destroy me when I was a younger man, tried to destroy, and if not careful, I could still be caught up in that vicious cycle. But I know if I don't keep my heart right, As pastor of this church, I could possibly lead somebody because bitterness and hatred always comes through the pastor down. I can't afford to lead a congregation into bitterness and hatred. I don't want to build no fence. The only fences I won't put up on my life are the landmarks that God has set generations before me. Remove not the old landmarks. We can't can't afford to be putting new areas in our life. I wonder if we could stand in this place. Because there's too many things happening in these last days that could cause us to get sidetracked and distracted off the the very thing that God wants us to be focused on, and that is, first, this gospel must be preached into the whole world. Preach this gospel to every creature. That's our mission. Jesus had to make sure John the Baptist wasn't offended. He made sure to tell John, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. 
Jesus knew that John the Baptist wouldn't be offended when he heard of all the things that was happening. The word was being fulfilled. So my question to you tonight, as long as the word is being fulfilled, why give room to offense? It's quiet in here, I know it. I feel this like awkward. But if the word is being fulfilled, why get offended? You know how many times I've had to make sure my heart was right that I didn't get offended at, at, at people in the church? Because I can't step behind this pulpit being offended at somebody. I can't do it. I'm afraid God will strike me, do something to my family. I don't know what, man. He's got a whole book of things he could do to you. I can't afford to be offended. So I want to open up this altar tonight. I did not preach just to make nobody mad or anything. But I love everybody in this place. Amen. From those on the back wall, Brother Josh, Brother Wildberg, Brother Cadiz, Brother Price, all the way up through here. The Sister Price behind me. I love everybody in this place. And the ones that aren't here, I'm not offended that, you know what, I could get offended real easy. Well, how dare they? They knew I spent all week on this message. Do they know how many meals I pushed away for this message? Not this week. In fact, I increased the meals this week, my Lord. I think I made up for some of those fasting times this week. I like to get back up and pray for me, pray for me, brother Ibarra. But in general, you know, I, I could go. I, I, how dare they? Life's too short to be offended. It's too short. How do we ex expect to be used of God if we're offended at the Word of God? Offended at our brother, offended at your, your pastor. How can I expect to be in good standing with the organization if I'm offended at the organization? But because of my attitude and spirit, it was within six months they were asking me to be a part of a board. You choose to be offended you will cut yourself off from everything that God has desired for you to do or be a part of everything you, you you cut yourself off I could get offended and walk out of this place but you know what I would give up everything and I would be left with nothing brother Eugene nothing my kids wouldn't even like me I'm surprised my kids like me now man I just it has to be the grace and mercy of God, Brother Farago. I told them on, we were on international waters, and I knew I wouldn't get in trouble because we're on international waters. I said, boy, you better straight up. We're on international waters right now. There ain't no laws here, son. <laughs> but I want to ask, is there somebody in this place this is God, I don't, want let, I don't want no one or nothing to steal my crown. Nothing. It's these little conversations I had with my grandfather that are so monumental in my life in times like these. Little conversations. Because I have the power to choose to be offended or not be offended. I have the power to forgive or not to forgive. 
And as Sister Price sings, she's been putting the mellow on this thing, helping me out a lot. I want to open up this altar. You want, if you want to kneel down where you're at right now, just find a place.